1,366 days, 294 starts, 114 wins, 1,844 strikeouts, three all-star teams, a World Series MVP, and a World Championship have all been accumulated since he walked into the Phillies clubhouse that first time in Cincinnati on May 12, 2006. The time has changed, the results have changed, and now again, the team is changing. Soon, one of the best left-handed pitchers in franchise history may no longer be wearing the Phillies' P. After a 4-1 road trip last night at Toronto, everybody kind of hit a brick wall when the news finally came down that there's an apparent deal that's right around the corner featuring Cole Hamels and Jake Diekman. Folks coming to the ballpark tonight will settle into their seats to see a ball game, but they'll also have on their mind the thoughts of one of the best left-handed pitchers the Phillies have ever had in their starting rotation. So here it is. We got Cole Hamels and Jake Diekman reportedly going to the Texas Rangers. This season, Hamels 6 and 7 with a 3.64 ERA. But of course, coming off the no hitter in his last outing against the Chicago Cubs, one of the real highlights not only of this season, but also of the last couple of years. And Jake Diekman, who was so good last year, 100 strikeouts, struggled early on this season, was kind of finding it. His numbers in 41 games, 2-1, and one, with a 5.15 earned run average. Now, what the Phillies reportedly will get back are a whole host of prospects from the Texas Rangers. Now, the guy that's at the front of the line is Jake Thompson. He's the highest-rated prospect, the 21-year-old, who is currently in double-A. But Jorge Alfaro, who is a catcher the Phillies need for depth in their organization. And Nick Williams at double-A, just 21 years old, 13 home runs. Everybody feels he is a bona fide hitter. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Matt Stairs and Ben Davis. All right, this is all part of the business of baseball. The Phillies have said for the last several months, even over the last year or so, that they are rebuilding, that they're turning the page. And they're turning the page on one of the, the real folk heroes for this organization, the 2008 World Series MVP. Well, they're turning the page, and unfortunately, it's that time of year where you have to make these decisions. You know, they got six very good players coming. But, you know, one thing about Cole Hamels, when I came over here in 2008, he was a guy, when I walked in the locker room, he'd come over and introduce himself like I didn't know who he was already. <laughs> but he just made yourself feel at home right away. And, you know, throughout the year in 08 and 09, he's a workhorse. And that's what you need out of your number one guy. He's a guy that goes out there and he throws every fifth day. You can see over the two years in 08 and 09, 65 starts, 421 innings. That doesn't include the nine postseason starts. So what you need out of a number one guy is a guy that goes out every day, gets you 33, 32 starts every year. Mm -hmm. He's a guy who wants the ball every day, but really a guy who goes out and competes every day. You know, a lot of times I went down, stand the bullpen, he'd ask me what I thought a lefty's strength is, you know, for facing a left-handed hitter. So he was picking my brain, I was picking his brain. He probably didn't know that. But he's definitely going to be missed. He's definitely a guy that you need at the top of the order. Well, it's amazing. And it's amazing when he was drafted by the Phillies uh, way back when with the 17th pick overall, you could just sense that there was something special about him. Now, you got a chance to watch him uh, for these last several years from a little bit of a distance. And now, up close, I mean, this is a pretty special pitcher. He is special. But I'd like to talk about the evolution of Cole Hamels. When he came up, he was pretty much fastball changeup. We know about how good that changeup was. It's a devastating pitch. It was his out pitch throughout his tenure here in Philadelphia. But the evolution of Cole, seemingly, his fastball, he had more life on it. We saw the no-hitter on Saturday. 96 miles an hour in the ninth inning, so he got a little bit more life on that fastball. The breaking ball was a pitch that really has come a long way for him. Even the cutters of pitches he developed over the years. So no matter how good he was or the Phillies thought he was early in his career, he still saw room for improvement, and he got better. And not to mention the things that he did off the field. He was a model citizen. He did a lot for the community here in Philadelphia, neighboring areas, and he will be missed. Yeah, he and his wife Heidi both will be missed with the Hamels Foundation. I'm sure they'll still have their footprint, though, here in the city of Philadelphia. It is not official as of yet. If we do get official word, we'll let you know as the game goes on. Speaking of the game, Aaron Harang comes off the DL. Shelby Miller, 21st start. Lineups at first pitch when we come back.
in this homestand. Four games against the Atlanta Braves, three games against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Tomorrow begins Toyota Alumni Weekend, but tonight begins the four-game set with Aaron Harang on the mound. Nick Markakis is ready to go. Harang's been out there for a few minutes. He's all ready to go without a minor league rehab stint. And the first pitch of the night to Nick Markakis. Outside, so we're underway. The count is one ball and no strikes. Kick is hitting 290 with a home run and 32 RBIs. He's hit in five straight. And he's back officially as the leadoff hitter over the last couple games. Harag's numbers coming off the disabled list. July 1st was his last start. He allowed 14 hits and eight, run, eight earned runs during that outing. On the disabled list with plantar fasciitis. And just so everybody knows, Matt, about Aaron Harang. Well, Budweiser scouting report, five-pitch pitcher. He'll use the fastball 61% of the time. He will mix in a change, curve, cutter, and a slider. Fly ball, left field line. Ben Revere playing left tonight, says he has it. One away. All right, with that, let's take a look at the rest of the Braves lineup. Brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of Philadelphia Phillies. Mavens walk into the plate, then Freddie Freeman and Adonis Garcia. A.J. Perzinski, the catcher, bats fifth. Chris Johnson, sixth. The bottom third of Peterson, Simmons, and Shelby Miller. Cameron Maven may have played himself into an everyday job with the Braves, not only the rest of this year, but also next year. Takes up high, 1-0. In fact, the last time we saw the Braves, he was on the verge of a cycle against the Bills. So we get a miss. One ball, one strike. What do you got, Ben Davis? It's good to be back, T-Mac. <laughs> good to be back. Matt, I thought he'd say something before that. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Outside, two and one. I gotta ask you, Tom, is it nice to be back in the States? We enjoyed our time in Toronto. I'm sure you did. It's we a did. wonderful city. Yeah. It's always nice to be back home, though. Out of play. It's two and two. I didn't know if we were going to get back into the country, though. Matt was having some issues. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Those Canucks. <laughs> Maven so far as five hits on this road trip, hitting a buck 85. Taps it foul. So I asked Aaron Harang today, I said, So how far do you think you can go tonight? Said, I don't know, as far as they need me to go. <laughs> you know, without a minor league rehab assignment, you wondered how he felt, and he feels pretty good. He threw a uh, couple of live BPs and then uh, he got up and down in a bullpen five innings in a bullpen he said he was up to 85 pitches he's a veteran guy he knows how to, his body's going to react he'll be fine shallow right field Cesar Hernandez goes out Dominic Brown comes in two outs all right man it's time now for our Nissan keys to the game and I'll start they did a, such a good job on that road trip with the extra base hits. Extra base hits are good. So hopefully they can keep that going. Well, and my key is no way Freddie Freeman beats you. He's got 288 average, seven home runs, 46 RBIs versus the Phillies. Nothing against Garcia hitting behind him, but you allow him to beat you, not Freddie Freeman. Yeah, Freddie Freeman, we didn't see him the last time. He was still battling that sore wrist. It was a right wrist contusion. It had a little more issues than that. Down and away. Two balls and no strikes. You getting deja vu right now, T-Mac? Freddie Freeman at the plate? Those seats are open out in center field. <laughs> We're going to be behind home plate near the on-deck circle on Tuesday against the Dodgers. I think you've got to show up in full catcher's gear, Ben. <laughs> that one's down the right field line. It is a foul ball, and it's two and two. What catching? What, what catcher's gear sponsored you when you played? 
Early on, I was All Star, and then later, when Nike got into it, I was with Nike. All right, especially being up in Seattle because it was yeah. very close to Phil Oregon. Knight. Yeah. All right, we got to get Nike to send you some gear. I have some. I still have a few. Oh yeah. A few shin guards and some chest protectors. Two two pitch, off the hands. Freddie Freeman sitting on 99 career home runs. That is exactly where we will be sitting on Tuesday. Ground ball, Michael Franco on the right side. And that'll be a 5 3 put out. And a 1 2 3 top of the first inning. Well, a pretty good start for Aaron Harang. We'll go to the bottom of the first. It's the Braves nothing. The Phillies coming up. By Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. By Budweiser, still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. By Citizens Bank, one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Toyota, where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. And by Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com. Ben Revere is settling into the batter's box. Shelby Miller is ready to throw his first pitch of the night. And here we go with the bottom of the first. Fastball in there. It's 0-1. Ben hitting 298, one home run, 26 runs batted in. And he slices it foul. Shelby Miller's numbers, they are deceivingly. They're deceiving. They're deceivingly good. Because of the win loss record, just five and seven. He's allowed only 102 hits and 127 innings pitched. Freddie Freeman on the first base side, it goes foul. He has not won since the 17th of May. And ben, our scouting report brought to you by Budweiser. We take a look at his scouting report. 92 to 96. He loves his fastball. He does have very good numbers against the Phillies, but he throws his fastball this year 68.3 percent of the time. So be ready for that heater. He's 2 and 0 this year against the Phillies with a 0 0.84 earned run average. So two of his five wins have come against the Phillies. Off the plate. Now, oh, this is going to be a tough play for Johnson. An infield hit. Rest of the Phillies lineup brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Hernandez is coming up, then Michael Franco, Ryan Howard bats cleanup, Odubel Herrera bats fifth, Freddie Galvis sixth, the bottom third of Dominic Brown, Carlos Ruiz, and Aaron Harang. Here's Cesar. 
good way to start off with a little shot put down the third baseline for a knock. He felt like the turf robbed him of a few hits in Toronto, he said. Some thick turf up there, wasn't it? Soft. I had to think about it. I mean, he, there were a couple of ground ball outs for him. He said on grass, those ground ball outs may have been hits. Interesting. Cesar bunts off the plate. Krasinski has it. It's a fair ball. Cesar doesn't run. So we'll go down as a 2 3. And we'll see if they give a sacrifice. So they do give him a sacrifice. By rule, uh, the official scores uh, usually give the hitter a ben the benefit of the doubt. Hit the plate. Yeah, I don't know what he was discussing. It, for the ball to bounce up that high, it obviously has to hit the plate. If it hits the dirt, it's just going to go straight down. Get no bounce. And we saw that last night with Freddie Galvis where uh, he didn't run a on a similar play. Well, now Michael Franco with the runner in scoring position. Up the third base line, Johnson charges. And there are two outs. Uh, you know, we've talked about this before, Tom and Ben, about I don't mind the sacrifice bunt, but you have a base dealer at first base. Give him a few pitches to be able to steal second base. Then if you want to go ahead and bunt him to third base, so be it. But not on the first pitch. One, you got to let him be able to throw pitches home. It gives your teammates an opportunity to see what kind of move he has to first or how quick he is to home plate. So sacrifice bunt. Hey, I have no problems, but I like to see it maybe in the second or third pitch, not the first one. And also, as a left-handed hitter, you have that hole open, so that gives you an advantage. Maybe end up with first and third, as opposed to just man on second with one out. And then, of course, when all else fails, when you do bunt the ball, run, run. Well, he got lucky that AJ didn't decide to come up and fire to second base. Even though Ben probably would have been second, a uh, safe at second base, you just never know. One ball, no strikes to Howard with a runner at second. Breaking ball, and it's one and one. Tom, tell me again how many home runs Ryan Howard has against Atlanta Braves? That's 50, isn't it? Yes. It's a great number. That is a lot of home runs versus a team. In the front page of the notes, they have. Uh, his overall numbers. Murph ran this down last time we faced the Braves. 50 home runs, 141 RBIs. <laughs> on the outside corner. Speaking of home runs, the Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant, Janice Swoyer of Whitehall. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, Ben, and Janice will win $300. Good luck, Janice. And I missed you guys. <laughs> ball, two strikes. Murph was looking to look up in the booth and raise his fist for the entire road trip. <laughs> My wife can attest that I really missed you guys. Driving her and the kids nuts at home. Every time we did the McDonald's home run jackpot, pot, did you wish somebody good luck? Every time. <laughs> and then went out to McDonald's. <laughs> two and two. Beer at second base. Howard was two for eight in the series against the Blue Jays. He was the DH in both of those games. Four and that puts runners on first and second. And Odubel Herrera, given the distinction of batting fifth here tonight, uh, will head to the plate. During the 2015 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Graham Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Pete McCannon uh, juggling his lineup a little bit. 
trying to get a few more left handers in it against the right hander Shelby Miller. That was the cutter and it's 0 and 1. We did not see Oduble in the series against the Blue Jays. Two. That was a fastball that was in a pretty good spot for Oduble. Fastball up and in. If he wanted it up and didn't get it in quite enough. And for a hitter with an exaggerated leg kick like Oduble, that's the pitch that's going to give him the most trouble if he does not get his foot down in time. But if he gets it down, that's a good pitch to hit. Tried to backdoor pitch, and it's one ball and two strikes. That was a cutter from Shelby Miller. Freddie Gonzalez just received a contract extension to manage the Atlanta Braves. It'll be fouled on the left field line. How about the amount of changes they've had <laughs> since the Phillies saw them down in Atlanta. In fact they have a a 13 player trade with the Marlins and the Dodgers that was just completed about an hour and 15 minutes ago. So a lot of the players that were in the bullpen for the Braves are no longer in the bullpen for the Braves. They're heading out to Los Angeles. Stays alive. He spoils it up the first baseline. I will say these are some of the better at bats the Phillies have had against Shelby Miller this year. Well, I would agree, Tom. It, it was nice to see Ryan Howard work out a walk. Especially, it could have been a very easy, say, ten pitch inning if he didn't work the walk out. But that's what you have to do when you when you face the guys that are very good, above average fastball sliders that. You need to battle and foul those pitches off, and hopefully he makes a mistake. Down the left field line again. Again, it goes foul. Well, this will be the seventh pitch of this at bat. He's fouled four off. Where you really need to take advantage if you're a pitcher of the hitter's aggressiveness. You know he's in swing mode, he's up there hacking. It's a good time for Shelby to climb the ladder, maybe bounce one in the dirt. I think you might see him elevate one here. Another one down the left field line. That one's slicing toward foul territory, and it's off the railing. Garcia gave it a, a try. Well, if he goes through the same pattern as he did in his last at bat here, then he should get a base hit soon. Wow, Jim Inches. Boy, he was really close. He thought for a moment a fan may have hit it. Just hit the railing. I, Adonis, ironically, is not a big fellow. He's about five foot nine, five foot ten. No offense, Matt. None taken. Twenty pitches so far for Shelby Miller. Another one fouled off. The game winning hit was an eleven pitch at bat, and he lined one to left center field. Against the Tampa Bay Rays, just out of the reach of Kevin Kiermeyer. Remember watching that at home and thinking that you know he hit the ball, and I just didn't think it came off the bat that hot, but it just really had some backspin and just kept carrying out to left center for the game winner. 
But that was a great at bat. Fun to watch. In the dirt, two balls and two strikes as Przinsky's able to knock it down. He's really working a lather up out on the mound. That gray uniform top is a little different shade than his pants. 22 pitches on a warm night here in Philadelphia. It rained for a good portion of the afternoon. Current conditions as we speak 78 degrees. A little cooler than I thought. Very humid though. Two and two. Chopper right side. Well, Shelby Miller is going to win this battle. They go the short way. So a 10 pitch at bat. He fouled off six of those pitches. But Miller gets through the first. He allows one hit, leaves two, and we'll head to the second. So we had a very special first pitch tonight, and that participant is down with Greg Murphy. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Yes, uh, the head coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions, James Franklin, is here. And, uh, uh, well, first of all, let's talk about that first pitch that Tom was just talking about because we see first pitches every night, but we don't see first pitches quite like we saw tonight. You, you really brought it. You were ready. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I guess the fanatic usually catches, and I said, well, I'm throwing it as hard as I can. They're like, well, maybe, maybe he shouldn't be the one catching it, but... We try to be aggressive in everything we do. <laughs> well, you certainly were aggressive. We're going to get a look at it right now. Uh, up on the mound, which not everybody does. And then it looked like a cutter. Is that what you threw, about a 75-mile-per-hour cutter? I, they told me it was high 80s, low 90s. You know, painted the edge of the plate. Frank Corr was pretty impressed. Yeah, well, they gave you a jersey for a reason. All right. Well, you know, you're a you're a suburban Philadelphia kid. You grew up watching this team. So I imagine, hey, that was kind of a thrill to get a chance to throw out the first pitch at a Phillies game. But also names like Lazinski, you're the same age as I am. Lazinski, Schmidt, Boa. They probably bring back some pretty good memories, didn't yeah. they? Not? Gary Maddox, yep. yeah, Carlton, the, the whole deal. So uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. To, for, for me to ever think that I would be coming to the Phillies uh, and throwing out the first pitch is, is surreal. Uh, but it's been great and uh, excited about you know this season and what we're going to be able to do at Penn State and, and being back home. Really cool. Talk a little bit about it because I think everybody who is a, a college football fan in this area certainly is excited about, uh, A, what you guys were able to do a year ago, a bowl win uh, at the end of your first season, uh, and, and building on that. So what can the fans expect, uh, the college football fans in this area, from, from the Nittany Lions this year? 
Well, I think you're going to see progress. Uh, you know, you just think about we're, we're getting closer to the 85 scholarships. Uh, last year we had 65 scholarships, but we were actually playing with 41 to 45 guys. So you're going to see more depth. I think you're going to see continue to, the talent to improve. We got good players. We're just trying to get more of them. Um, and, and I just think year two. Uh, last year we had one returning starter on the offensive line. Christian is very happy that we got four returning starters this year. So uh, I, I think you're going to see progress. I know you have your, your, a lot of your staff out here today and, and getting a chance to you know get behind the scenes of the Phils organization. Uh, pretty impressive operation, don't, don't you think, the Phils? It's been awesome. We do a staff retreat this, every year. This year was here in Philadelphia. Spent the mornings talking football, and then we'd get out in the afternoons doing different things. The Philadelphia Phillies have been unbelievable to us. We had a great experience and couldn't be more appreciative. Well, we're glad to have you here at Citizens Bank Park, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the upcoming season, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, guys, let's send it back upstairs. All right, Murph, 7-6 and six last year for Penn State, 2-6 and six of the Big Ten. As Murph said, they got to a bowl game. He's got himself a little energy, doesn't he, boys? It's Chris Johnson has the count two balls and one strike. I love watching him pace the sidelines. <laughs> he is... Very energetic coach, I tell you. I'm sure, Frank Core was pretty excited about catching uh, the first pitch. Jeff's a big college football fan, probably dropped in a little Clemson talk. Three balls, one strike to Chris Johnson. Swing and a miss, three and two. Liner down the right field line. That'll be in for a base hit. Dominic Brown will cut it off. Johnson rounds first and he'll put the brakes on. Well, tomorrow is the start of Alumni Weekend here at Citizens Bank Park. Really, it began today with the Alumni Luncheon. Pat was honored. A bunch of fans got a chance to listen to him answer some questions. Then Saturday's Alumni Night here at Citizens Bank Park. Sunday is the Phillies Wall of Fame Fathead, which will be given out free to all fans. Tickets can be purchased anytime by going to Phillies.com. Well, Chris Johnson had been 0 for 4 on this road trip, had not played much. Or 0 for 10 on this road trip, I should say, and 0 for 13 overall before that base hit. Nice play by Dominic Brown down the right field corner to keep it to a, a long single. Could also get over there and get it in quick. You most likely need a, an extra base hit now to score Johnson from first base. It is a good play. And there is a base hit to right field for Jace Peterson. Johnson's on his way to third. And Peterson will hold up at first base. Peterson had been one for ten in the last series for the Braves. All right, so back to back singles now, and you've got Simmons to deal with before the pitcher Shelby Miller comes up. Well, I know we're Early in the ball game, second inning, pitches on deck, hitting 0 29. You gotta believe you gotta be very careful in this situation. I would totally agree with you on that. Ben, you're the catcher. What do you think? Well, I think it's a second inning, and Simmons struggling in July. I'd be very aggressive. See if you can get him to hit your pitch, and then you have the pitcher leading off next inning. He's hitting 213 here in the month of July. Simmons is. And he takes on the outside corner. See, that's the thought process of a DH yeah. compared to a catcher. <laughs> if I have a guy that, that I know is struggling, I don't want to give him a free pass. That one spun out towards second. Caught by Cesar Hernandez. Side is retired. No runs, two hits, and two men left. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning. Freddie Galvis will lead it off when we come back.
and plus the Bob crew will talk about the trade deadline and Jeff Bosher get you ready for the start of Eagles training camp. Start your day with Bob at the beach tomorrow morning 6 until 8 on the Comcast Network. Bottom of the second inning. Phillies and the Braves scoreless. It'll be Freddie Galvis, Dominic Brown, Carlos Ruiz. Freddie hit a 272 with four home runs. He's hit in six consecutive games. In fact, his last 24 games, he's hitting 319. First pitch is inside. It's one ball and no strikes. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, this was a wacky game. Mets led it 7 1. They had a rain delay. Padres climbed back to make it 7 5 after they resumed play. It started raining again in the ninth inning, and Justin Upton gave the Padres the lead. And then they put the tarp on the field for it had to be three hours. <laughs> and then the Padres got the last three outs just before we went on the air tonight. That is a terrible loss for the Mets because the the Nationals won their game one nothing. So that means the lead for the Nats is three over the Mets. Just to have that lead and lose it. Oh, and I told you, Tom, that's what you take Jonathan Nice out of that ball game. There's just no because you have a bigger lead. You want to preserve some innings. I don't know. I think you got to go for whatever you can go for. Balls off the leg of Freddie Galvis. I was down in the coach's room when Upton hit the home run. <laughs> As you see the foul ball here. This is solid. Right off the calf. Better off the calf than off the shin bone. Either way, it doesn't feel good. Sean Fikasny popping up, just taking a look. And now he comes out. See, I'm going to disagree with you, Ben, because I think I'd rather take one off the shin. Because if you take one off in the calf, it's going to cramp up and it's going to go into spasm. <laughs> At least you get one in the shin, you can put some ice on it in the calf. That would affect your speed, wouldn't it? it I mean, it would. I mean, my doubles, uh, my triples would be, I you mean, know, stand up singles now. <laughs> Needs himself a little extra time here. Some of that cold spray. Get some of that on there. That's the winter ball move. Do you even use that anymore? <laughs> no. Brian Gorman, the home plate umpire. He's the crew chief. Mark Carlson's at first. Dave Morales at second. And Trip Gibson is around to third. Well, Freddie's ready to go. There's a little throbbing still in that leg. Out to left field. Garcia is under it. And one out. Well, we mentioned the big trade that the uh, Braves put together with the Dodgers and the Marlins. So the Dodgers get all you know, the players the Dodgers get. <laughs> Alex Wood, who's going to go into their rotation. Matt Latos, who's going to go into their rotation. Mike Morse, who's going to be on their bench. Jose Peraza, who's the number one uh, prospect in the Braves organization with a 319 on base percentage. He'll go to the minors. Johnson Avilan will go to the bullpen. Bronson Arroyo will rehab uh, out in Arizona again. The Marlins pick up three prospects. That's all they get. Uh, the Braves got a Cuban, a 30 year old Cuban player who they wanted that the Dodgers outbid them for. But now they'll get him for less money. If that makes any sense at all. Freddie's still in a little bit of pain. And he's going to go back and have that leg looked at. One ball, two strikes to Dominic Brown. Very surprised that A.J. Pierzynski, being a veteran catcher, didn't go back in <laughs> with another pitch to Freddie Gowers. They went away, they got him out, fly ball to left field. But if I'm a catcher, last thing you want to do as a hitter is foul another one off. 
that same spot or even in the same vicinity. So I'm going back in hard. You mean when you were a catcher? When I was a catcher. Thank you. <laughs> long, long time ago. Looks like it, Ben. Long, long. Outside, two and two to Dominic Brown. Did everything right. Yeah. Oh. Rats. <laughs> yep, that's the word he chose. <laughs> out toward the middle, Simmons up with it. The other two outs. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag Philly Photo Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T Mobile. Carlos Ruiz and they're announcing that this is Carlos's 1,000th career game play up on the big video board. Fans here in Philadelphia have loved what he's been able to bring over the years. Even though his numbers aren't up to the normal standards of Carlos Ruiz. It's that one to right center field. It's playable. For Maven, and the side is retired. So the Phillies go down in order here in the bottom of the second. Carlos Ruiz, that's a great man right there. It's a very nice milestone as we go to the third. Just for you, get the StubHub app today. Start at StubHub and let the fun find you. StubHub is the official fan fan to fan ticket marketplace of Phillies.com. Shelby Miller leads it off. He takes strike one. It's 0 and 1. Miller hitting 0 29, as Matt pointed out before. Breaking ball right there. Yeah. 
two two. Asked Aaron today how the plantar fasciitis feels, and he said fine. He said uh, went through a little acupuncture, a lot of stretching. Oh. The ball just got a piece of Carlos Ruiz right in the chest. He said that he was uh, told two days ago, uh, or actually yesterday morning, hey, would you mind just starting in Philadelphia instead of going to? A rehab assignment as that ball is under the glove of Freddie Galvis. And he said, Yeah, I have no problem. Shelby Miller will get a base hit out of that one. Well, it's time now for Gene Stuff, the fans' trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fans section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, guys, here you go. Who's the only pitcher in MLB history to win 15 or more games in 17 consecutive seasons? Answer will be revealed a little later on. You're saying this is a layup. Yes, I am. That ball is ripped into right field. Dominic Brown sweeps it and gets it on a hop. He fires to second, but Miller's there. So back to back singles now for the Braves. And that puts runners on first and second. Tom, I won't lie. I had no idea what you were doing. I thought you were catching flies or. <laughs> <laughs> well, remind me not to have you as my partner for charades. <laughs> or horse. <laughs> Tell you what, Tom Brown is very lucky that ball did not get by him there. <laughs> I'm looking for flies. You're giving us a hint. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Pete Carrillo always said, you don't have to worry about going up with your left hand on the left side of the court. Go up with your right hand as long as you put it in. No one wanted me. You wouldn't have me as a partner for horse. No, you, you said you wouldn't have him in charades. Yeah. And I said, well, don't ask him for in horse either. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's a shooting game in basketball. Now. Yeah. Just get the puck in deep, right? <laughs> oh, and. Oh, and won the Mavid. He fly to right. First time up, and it's one ball, one strike. I know we can't blame the umpires for a lot of things, but Brian Gorman, the 0 2 pitch, the breaking ball, bring him up. The one to Shelby Miller. To Shelby Miller. Yeah, I agree yes. with that. That one's going to bloop out toward right center field. Here comes Dominic Brown, and again he tries to sweep it. This time he's unsuccessful. Fortunately, Miller was holding up at second base, so now the bases will be loaded. It'll be three straight hits for the Braves. And Freddie Freeman. All right, Matt. Well, here's your key. Well, unfortunately, you cannot pitch around them. So hopefully, you make a nice quality pitch. Dominic Brown coming in. You know, got, got lucky. <laughs> See the ball off the bat, it seems like. Not sure where he lost it. Lights are on. It's still pretty bright out. It seems like it's gotten brighter. Yeah. All right, so Freeman fly to left his first time up. Fouls it back, it's 0 and 1. This is a Braves team that has struggled to score runs for Shelby Miller. Freddie Gonzalez, though, has his best hitter up now with the bases loaded and nobody out. Must have been low, and it's one ball, one strike. Braves have gone 43 in a third innings without scoring a an earned or unearned run while Shelby Miller has been out on the mounds. 43 in a third innings. Inside two and one. 
guess we understand a little bit more why he hasn't won a game since the 17th of May. Balls, two strikes. Got him. Boy, that's a big out right there. It's a changeup from Aaron Harang, and that's his first strikeout of the night, and it's a whopper. One of the oddest swings you'll ever see Freddie Freeman take. He was obviously looking for something else. This goes into pretty much emergency hack right here. Completely fooled on that. It said change up 85 on the board. I don't think maybe that was a cutter. Well, I wondered about that too. Well, now here's Garcia. Swing and a miss. You might be able to get him to go a little efficient here. Now look, the split. Change up. Yeah. yeah. Sort of that bulking grip almost. But what? it was by him. I was going to say, if you're that late, then what are you sitting on? A curveball? Apparently. With two strikes? Two. Garcia's second at bat. And he swung at all three pitches he's seen tonight. We make a note of that for later on in the ball game, in the series, or even the year. Front of a breaking ball, and it remains one ball and two strikes. Good play by Ruiz to smother that. It evens things up at two balls and two strikes. Here in the top of the third scoreless game the Braves have the bases loaded. With one man down. <laughs> Dribbler back toward the mound harangue is off the hill flips underhand they get the out of the plate. Two away. One two on the put out bases remain loaded and A.J. Perzinski is the batter. Very nice pitch right there. Hard slider down out of the zone. Using the guy who swings at a lot of pitches. Little tap it back to the mound. Nice job of getting the ball. Shoots catching it make sure he was standing on top of home plate. It was a good play by Harang in the fact that he didn't panic. I would have liked to have seen him maybe use his glove. You know you're not going to get two in that situation. Make sure that out. Make sure you get the, the out at home plate. You're worried about a little bit of a bobble there? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, he's got some big mittens, but. <laughs> well, now Przinski, who popped out his first time up. Well, the bases loaded. Great numbers with the bases loaded during his career. Fastball low, 1-0. Three hits and 17 career at bats against Aaron Harang. Boy, that ball had some 
nasty movement on it. That was a slider. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, says the third base umpire, Trip Gibson. AJ always the fiery one. <laughs> I thought he went. Mm -hmm. well, it didn't look like he did. They give you an idea of how long AJ's been around. This is Chooch's 1,000th game. This is AJ's 1,936th game. 1936. The one-two pitch. Ground ball left side. Franco can't get it. Galvez does. Throws over to first. Not in time. A run scores. An infield hit. It's one nothing Atlanta. Not a whole lot anybody could do on that one. No, it's actually a pretty good pitch. It's out of the zone, fastball away. Just puts it in play, and unfortunately, you have to shift from the infield. Freddie was up the middle, but he does a nice job getting the ball right here and not allowing another run to score. Yeah, great point. With Maven's speed, he would have for sure scored from second base. Well, that's now a five game hitting streak. It's 1 0 Atlanta. Bases remain loaded. With two outs, Chris Johnson's up. Swings at the first pitch. It's 0-1. And we mentioned that's the first run that the Braves have scored. While well, Shelby Miller's in the game in 44 innings. Had been 43 in the third before this inning. That's remarkable. Yeah, they've scored runs in his games, but he's right. been out. Side two and one. A lot of pitches this inning. Yeah, he's at 62, and we're not out of the third. Toward right field, Dominic Brown is out there and makes the catch. Side is retired. So he minimizes the damage. Even though seven men came to the plate in the inning, he allows one run and leaves them loaded. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Braves up by one.
Along with you buy right, buy the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. And buy Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. One nothing Braves on top. We'll move to the bottom half of the third inning. Braves with six hits, including Shelby Miller picking up a hit. He's been sitting a while. He was on the base paths for a little while. Aaron Harang will lead things off. Harang hitting 179 on the year. Well, hopefully, with Shelby Miller being on the base pass for a while, he's a little tired. You had a knock, you had a start and go at first to second, a start and go from second to third, then a start again to get to third base. So. Inside corner two and one. He had a long first inning, now he had a quick second inning. That is a fair ball down the right field line. Aaron Harang will put the brakes on at first base. That is more of a parachute there, Tom. <laughs> See Swat Samuel signaling. <laughs> Two hands out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Matt was signaling up here in the booth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Step in the bucket and go to right. I love it. Fastball away. That's why these guys have to condition the way they do the starting pitchers. I mean Aaron's a big guy. But you know you pitch a long half inning you got to come up you get a knock now you have to run the bases. You have to be conditioned. Not being held on over at first. I mean Freddie Freeman's there in his back pocket but. Not technically holding him on. That one's pulled down the right field line. It is a foul ball. So Aaron will take a stroll back to the bag. Two and two. Tell you what, Freddie Freeman at first base, he can have a conversation with the best of them. Still chatting away. <laughs> Very loquacious. Oh, and Aaron could talk too. Right past John Miserock. And the count remains two balls, two strikes. I'd like to see him and my wife square off. <laughs> Watch it. I know. Drive one hopper scooped up by Simmons and they'll turn a double play. Six four three, two outs. Cesar Hernandez is coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Well, uh, you've got to think that Shelby Miller is feeling uh, very good right now because that uh, that scoreless streak for him when he is on the mound has ended at over 42 innings. Because of that, he hasn't had a win in his last 12 starts, but. Still fourth in the National League in ERA. He has pitched very well, and part of the reason, guys, is because of his cutter. Take a look at the average versus his cutter a year ago and this year. 
down to 122. You see the slugging at 173. Where does that rank him as opponents batting against his cutter? Well, that's first in all of baseball at 122. So very effective use of that cutter. And obviously get him a couple of runs and good things are going to happen. So that's what the Braves are going to try to do. We've seen that happen with other pitchers in Phillies uniforms. You know, you don't score for them. They can't get a win. Shelby Miller's been going through that problem, but they've got a run on the board for him. Here's hoping the Phillies can put a couple more on, on for their side uh, and uh, get to Miller at some point, guys. Outside to Hernandez, two and one. Well, if you talk to Shelby Miller uh, about that cutter, it was a pitch that was taught to him by Justin Masterson, uh, who came over to the Cardinals uh, from the Cleveland Indians. Uh, and that's where Miller used it, picked his brain, and utilized it. And it's become, as Murph just pointed out, an excellent pitch for him. I mean, you know, he, he learned it in the big leagues. It wasn't like he learned it in the minors and worked on it. He learned it in the big leagues. It's become an excellent pitch for a lot of pitchers. On the outside corner, three and two. It's got to be very hard for left hander, especially where he stands on the mound, the first base side. Being able to throw that cutter inside, being able to throw a 96 mile an hour fastball paint low and away, but he also tries to throw backdoor cutters all the time. Which Ben, you being the next catcher, that's going to be hard for a pitcher to throw a backdoor cutter from where he is standing versus a left-hander. Yeah, to get it on that side of the plate without it catching too much plate, because if sometimes you have a tendency if you're on that side of the rubber to throw it. You know, Back door to a left, your front door to a righty. It's going to come back a little bit more and catch a lot of plate, and that ends up being a great pitch to hit for a lefty. I don't know what you guys think, but I, he looks gas. He looks exhausted, doesn't he? Look how he's walking around. He's trying to keep his hand dry from sweat. Doesn't want to blister up. Hit for Cesar. Two out single, and Mike Franco's coming up. Well, it is muggy, and he's sweating a lot, but you kind of think he'd be used to this, wouldn't you? I would agree, yeah. It's down in hot Atlanta. It's hot, it's hot down there. It's a little warm. Plus, oh, he's from okay. Texas. Yeah, so. Oh, he's had a 10 pitch at bat to Odubel and a 9 pitch at bat right there to Cesar Hernandez in this game. It's a big hit for Cesar there for the team. Hit a 3 1 count, took a fastball, fouled off a couple pitches, shot one to the left, gives Aaron Harang a little bit more time to get some wind back in him. There he goes, pitches a strike, throw to second base by Brzezinski, not in time. Stolen base number 15 for Cesar. Brzezinski now 9 of 58, trying to throw runners out. Very good jump. Very good pitch to throw on if you're a catcher. AJ just not as much on it as he did in years past. Good swing there. Humidity temperatures at 80 degrees. He went according to home plate umpire Brian Gorman, and no argument from Michael Franco. So the side is retired. Strikeout number one for Shelby Miller. We've completed our first three. Braves up one nothing.
Toner cartridges print up to one third more pages. Get yours from who? But WB Mason today and experience the difference. Nobody beats WB on HP. Top of the fourth inning, and the Phillies trail at one nothing. Jace Peterson will lead it off. It'll be Peterson, Simmons, and Shelby Miller against Aaron Harang. First pitch is a breaking ball that's in there. It's 0 1. Peterson had one of uh, the two hits the Braves picked up in the second inning. Overall, they have six hits. Out toward left center field. Here comes Herrera, and he tracks it down. What a way. Well, this Tuesday, the Phillies will take on the Los Angeles Dodgers in game one of a three game series. Game one is at 7.05. Wednesday is a 7.05 start. Thursday, a 1.05 start. Citizens Bank Pride of the Phillies uh, print featuring the Phillies mural, free to fans, free to all fans. And it's Nemours Kids Run the Bases. Post game for fans 14 and under. What are your tickets now by going to Phillies.com? Here's Simmons. Up the third base line. This is going to be a tough play. Oh, Franco. Let it go. It'll be a base hit, and I think he realized once he was in foul territory that he should have tried to let it go. It's that second bounce, you could really see the English on that baseball, and that would have pushed the ball foul. Right there. Initial instinct is to go get it and make a play. It's just hard to tell yourself to back off. Curve ball as Miller was showing bunt. All right, so seven hits. Would you say one? Maybe two. Peterson's first one, or Peterson's hit in the second, and Marquez's is hit in the third. Those are the hardest hit balls. Yeah, Johnson's hit. This single was. Well struck the mm -hmm. right field. Bunts it foul, one ball, one strike. See him bunt one really, really hard here back to Aaron. You get a 1 6 3 double play where Shelby has to run a full 90 and really be gassed for the next inning. And he does bunt it toward the mound. Arang will make the play to first. Sacrifice is successful. 1 4 on the put out. Well, Carlos Gomez has finally been traded. Nope, not to the New York Mets, as first reported last night. He has uh, been traded to the Houston Astros. They get Gomez and starting pitcher Mike, Fier Mike Fires. And then the Brewers receive Brett Phillips, Domingo Santana, Josh Hader, and Adrian Hauser. Santana was the former Philly prospect uh, who went to the Astros in the Hunter Pence trade as a 19 year old. Prospects 2, 7, 14, and 21 have uh, been sent to the Brewers. Santana will immediately go to AAA. You know, reports last night were that uh, it was medical issues that uh, caused that trade with the Mets to never go through. Now, everybody thought it was Zach Wheeler's medical issues, which they did say that was part of it because he had to have two different things done. With his elbow. He had Tommy John surgery and there was something else they had to have done. But then the reports popped out that it was maybe something with Carlos Gomez's hip, and everybody said he doesn't have a hip problem. Yeah, Boris, <laughs> Boris came out today, so that's the first time we've ever had heard that he's had a hip injury. He's never had an MRI, never had an X ray, never had a doctor look at it, never left the ball game with an injured hip. 
Kind of surprising though the Houston Astros would go out and get another bat. Well they get the pitcher too but I. I think he's going to do really well there. I mean Crawford boxes with you know, the way center field is set up. Yeah. He's going to do really well there. They're tightening up their defense a little bit I guess in the outfield. Plus defensively that is the dead center field I believe it's 440 mm -hmm. to center field there. There's a lot of ground to cover and he's able to do that with his speed. Well he has done it before. He's made an unbelievable catch up on that. Oh yeah before. that's right. Cake is up at the plate two balls no strikes. Looking at that that Astros ball club. He's a player that they have now on their team that was with the Braves the last couple of years Evan Gaddis. He's a big caveman looking at seven triples he yeah. has this year. Seven. The rest of the team only has five. He's also enjoyed, uh, although he's had some long home runs, he's enjoyed the short porch in left field too. As well, he should. It's 240. Yeah. And you should be able to it's hit a really ball high two, wall, two, though. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and my Lord, 240 to left. Actually, it's about three, what, 310? I think it's, yeah, I think 310 is. There's ball four. Marquez walks. And here comes Cameron Maven. Busy day. Busy couple days. David Price going to the Blue Jays. That'll make them better. We just spent the last couple of days up there, and some of the fans were wondering, well, why did we get another bat? No. Well, it worked out last night for them. And now they'll add Price, who will start on Sunday. Maven hits it to shortstop. Freddie Galvis has it. And the side is retired. So, a little bit of trouble here in the fourth inning, but no big deal for Aaron Harang. Last to the fourth inning. Phillies trail it 1 0 to the Braves. Most exciting lineup ever. ShopNissan.com and by Jefferson, where health is all we do. Call 1 800 Jeff now or visit Jefferson.edu. Bottom half of the fourth inning, Braves up 1 nothing. There's Jake Diekman, who's still in a Phillies uniform out in the bullpen. As we mentioned before, all kinds of reports. As everybody knows that Jake and Cole Hamels. Are going to be traded to the Texas Rangers. It's pending physicals. Now those physicals can take time, uh, depending on the number of players, and of course the reported players. Uh, there are a lot of them. As Howard leads it off, those physicals are looked at, or those X-rays and all the reports are looked at by the Phillies team physician or the Rangers team physician, and the athletic trainers like Scott Sheridan. Ball, no strikes to Ryan Howard. Fouls it away, one and one. Well, and it, it takes a while because the, the the amount of money that's involved. You know, you see some trades that happen very quickly. 
but with Cole's contract being what it is, you got to make sure that everything, everyone's passing the physical. And, and when I got traded, it was like I had the GM drive me to the airport. <laughs> did you really have the GM drive you to the airport? No, oh. figure your speech, Tom. It would have been funny though if you did. <laughs> Seen you interact with GMs. I can see that happening. One ball, two strikes to Howard. Check swing. Simmons backhands, throws in time. One away. Toyota Major League scoreboard. Max Scherzer gets the win today for the Nationals. Jonathan Papelbon gets his first save. He pitched a 1 2 3 ninth inning for the Nats. So they defeated the Marlins 1 zip. With that win, the Nationals now three games up over the Mets in the National League East. He got his number 58 from Doug Fister. Fister's now wearing 33. No doable bunts toward third. That's a beautiful bunt. No chance for Johnson. A nice thing to have in your arsenal to be able to do that, knowing that you have the wheels. A lot of guys can't just can't do it. It really is a lost art, but just to have that in your arsenal, knowing that you could pull that out whenever you can. And he gave himself away pretty early, but when you have those wheels and you have that placement, it just equals success, and that's your GMC Precision Player of the Game. Well, now we'll see if he decides to take off at some point. Well, that was awfully close over at first. Kind of shortened his lead over there at first base a little bit now. As, as he should. I mean, Shelby Miller, when he does the leg kick, he's pretty slow to home. You know, and like Ben mentioned, AJ doesn't throw as well as he used to when he was younger. So there's no need to get out that far of a lead. Big hit it to right field. Herrera had to jump back because, well, that was going right at him. Freddy Galvis is aboard. That puts runners on first and second with one man down. I was going to say, if you have a bigger lead, you're going to wear that one right in the hip. Oh, he would have worn it all right. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. <laughs> yeah. I think you and I would have been thrown out at second there, Matt. <laughs> Galvis now a seven game hitting streak, and here's Dominic Brown. Dominic rounded out to shortstop his first time up. And he throws a first pitch cutter. It's 0 and 1. What a time for your first home run of the year. You feeling it, huh? I've been saying it every time he's been coming up. It's 128 plate appearances for Dominic. Counting the ground out to shortstop his first time up. Shoots it the other way at base hit. Herrera didn't read it right away, so he'll stop at third. And the bases are now loaded for the Phils. Three straight hits against Shelby Miller. 
Dominic just served that right into left field. He does a nice job of recognizing the curveball. You talk about getting your foot down early and going with the pitch. Now that's a tough play for Herrera on the line drive in between a short and third. Because you really can't determine how far it is it towards third base. So you freeze now. The base is loaded with one out. With all the shifts that they're putting on, especially with the lefties, it's hard to know where these defense defensive infielders are going to be. I mean, with guys on, you pretty much have to play more straight up, especially with the bases loaded. Carlos takes strike one. It's 0 and 1. So conventional hit or line drive in the hole where it would normally be a hit, you never know. There might be a, an infielder there now. Into left center field at base hit. One run is in. Here comes Galvis. He'll score. And the Phillies take the lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. What makes this play? Chooch, great job keeping his hands in enough to hit that ball to the left field or left center field. But what, it, what I was very impressed with was Freddie Galvis. You talk about baseball instincts. I looked at the ball was pretty much going over Simmons head. As soon as this ball is hit, boom, he's on his way. He knows that ball is over shortstop, makes it home easily. Very instinctive baseball by Freddie. That camera angle showed it perfectly. Here's Harang. He shows bunt, takes high, 1-0. Dominic Brown was off the bag a little bit. Freddie's taking a breather right now. Now Harang did single his last time up and he now has six hits which is the most since 2009 for him. Try to get two more in scoring position. Kind of an interesting uh, way to go about it for Aaron Harang. He's got a little uh, Ryan Howard in him before he finally brings the bat back. Hey, you're not surprising anybody here. Get that bat out in front. Simmons felt like Dominic Brown may have moved off the bag after the safe sign was called. So now he, he signals to Freddie Gonzalez, who then signals to Brian Gorman. I don't know, Andrelton, Andrelton Simmons reacted pretty quickly. This is after he steps up. He might have stepped up. When he stepped up, his foot may not have been on the base when Simmons tagged him. Simmons was coyly waiting for it. I mean, it's close. It looked like his foot was still above the bag when he put the ball on his back. Oh boy. Watch it again. Yeah, he's off the base. Ball's on his back, he's off the base. Oh boy. He's going to be out if they see that one right there, and that's going to be terrible. I don't know what you can say. You, you just can't come off the bag. Here we go. This is going to be crazy. Brian Gorman still talking to New York. It's up to New York what's going on. Must be giving him some kind of a message. Or looking at a different angle. Or looking at a different angle. Here you go. 
See the foot's up off the off, off the bag. The ball's on his back at the top of your screen. And here's the signal. He is out at second base. Oh man, man alive. That just cannot happen. It's happened way too much this year overall. The poor base running, the sliding past the bag. You got to give Simmons a great, great amount of credit. He knew exactly what he wanted to do there. He waited. I mean, he took a chance that Dominic Brown was going to do that. Now there's a strike three to Aaron Harang. All right, well, the good news is the Phillies have taken the lead on a two run single by Carlos Ruiz. The bad news is they've got caught in a little bit of a bad rate, bad base running blunder yet again. 2 1 Phils as we go to the fifth inning. And here we go. Who is the only pitcher in MLB history to win 15 or more games in 17 consecutive in, uh, seasons, not innings? Yeah, the guy was, he, he wasn't very good at layup. He had a very good three pointer. Greg <laughs> Maddox. I bet you had a pretty good layup, too. <laughs> Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. And I believe he had 19 consecutive gold gloves. Say 19. I know he's highlighted a lot when you go to that page in the baseball almanac. Well, the Phillies lead it two to one as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Freddie Freeman takes outside. Strike. Freeman is 0 for 2. He's grounded out to third and he is struck out. Freddie Galvis, who's playing that way, comes over to give it a look. It's off the top of the dugout. So the count one ball, two strikes to Freeman. The overshift on. Michael Franco is on the right side of the diamond. That's where he fielded the ground ball the first time. Oh, Brian Gorman flinched a little bit. Aaron Harang wanted him to flinch all the way. And it's two and two. You don't see Aaron complain a whole lot. He's very stoic out on the mound. Pretty much the same expressions the entire time. He really wanted that one.
Now he just threw uh, his 80th pitch. Nice grab by a gentleman in the suite level. There you go. That one is ripped out toward right field. Dominic will play it on the hop. Yeah, and a leadoff single for Freddie Freeman. Well, it's time now for our Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. Brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Well, Aaron Harang, he gets 2.65 runs per game, tied for the least amount with Bartolo Colon. Shelby Miller, even though he had gone 44 innings without a run of support, is at 2.90. And that's the fifth least amount of runs given to a pitcher. And now Garcia, who's 0 for 2. Slide to left and get into a fielder's choice. He's from Cuba, hit 62 home runs when he played baseball in Cuba. Signed by the Yankees. Never really panned out with the Yankees. This year in AAA for the Braves, he had 284 with three home runs. You're the brand new bat, never been used before. No pine tire, no stick em, nothing. Swing and miss again. He likes to swing, doesn't he? <laughs> he sure does. Ready to go. <laughs> Not picking up any spin. Zero rotation right now. You have to keep throwing it, don't you, Matt? You would think. A little farther out. And a Back strike three second. call, yep, on the outside part of the plate. Second strike out for Harang. Same pitch he threw Freeman O2. He'll come back here to Seamer. To right field, Dominic Brown will cut it off on a hop one more time. And he lets it loose over to third. So two singles in this inning. AJ Przinski is now two for three. And here's Chris Johnson. All right, so 86 pitches for Harang in his simulated games, uh, where he get up and down in the bullpen. You know, he take a breather for a few minutes, come up, throw 15 pitches, take a breather again. He got as high as 85 pitches, but he said he's totally fine to keep on going past that number. I would think if you can get out of this inning with a two to one lead, be very happy with five innings with the, you know, his, uh, his outing today. Inside, one to know. I might be inclined to think if he does roll a double play, they might send him back out. Maybe. I think this would be, boy, this would be huge though if he can at least get through this inning.
Good night, that swing, Ben. <laughs> Johnson wasn't very happy with himself. He sure was upset. Very vocal player. A high fly ball left field. Revere is back. He's got plenty of room. The runners will go back to tag. Revere's under. It makes the catch. So two outs. And that'll bring Jace Peterson to the plate. Follow the Phillies wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Boy, how big would MLB.com at bat be right now with all the trades that are being <laughs> run out there? We keep getting updates. Peterson takes wide, one to know. This has been one of the, the better trade deadline things I think I've seen in my career. Well, if you, big names. Yeah, if you want to see movement. Yeah. I think with all the teams that are still involved, whether it be in divisional races, but also in wildcard races, that's why. It's surprising like the Tigers the Tigers are not out of it by any stretch no. but then they trade David Price so. And they trade their closer and you know Soria. Yeah. Out of play two and one. I think the fact that they wound up losing two of three to the Rays really hurt them. Verlander won the final game. He looked like his, his old self. Oh, he did. 2 1 pitch to Peterson. Curve ball waved at 2 and 2. And then the other thing, too, is you would assume Cespedes will go at some point before tomorrow's 4 o'clock deadline. Yeah, Detroit going into today's game. Just three and a half out of the Walker. Yeah. And that's without Miggy. All of it without Cabrera. Runners will be off now on this next pitch with the count three and two and two men down. Brzezinski over at first base. Freddie Freeman at second. Simmons in the on deck circle. Go pitches on the inside corner strike three call a fastball at 92 miles an hour that may be it for Aaron Harang he allowed two base runners but gets out of a jam here in the top of the fifth and he'll leave with a 2-1 lead.
Series, the Toyota Larry Boa Bobble Figurine, free to all fans. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. There it is right there. Bo wearing the uh, old time unis. Brian Gorman just went on to the headset uh, and I guess spoke to the folks up in New York. I, I don't know what about. Uh, we'll hopefully get an update as to why. But he went on the headphones headsets and was talking to somebody in New York. As we move to the bottom of the fifth inning it's two to one Phillies on top. Ben Revere leads it off. Revere, one for two in this ball game. There's nothing that happened in the last inning that would be a rules question or anything like that. Oh, and two to Revere. Elvis Arajo is in the bullpen loosening up. And Ben Revere is struck out. That was a changeup from Shelby Miller. Three strikeouts. Pitch he doesn't throw very often. They get surprised Ben just by his reaction. Well, he took two fastballs right down the middle, and then swings at the changeup in the dirt. Cesar Hernandez. Outside at high, one and zero. And a line drive, base hit it to center field. <laughs> Second hit for Cesar. He's now two for two. Michael Franco's coming up. Let's check you with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. As promised earlier in the game, we have selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. Today's photo comes from Michelle at Ed Mac 3013. She and her co-worker Patty enjoying their experience at Baseball 101. That was back uh, last season, 2000 or yeah, 2014. We ask you to tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag Philly Photo Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself. In an upcoming broadcast, all brought to you by the good folks at T-Mobile. Guys, yeah, we'll keep on doing this as uh, the season moves on. Some great spots around the ballpark to take a photo and then send it on in. Franco is grounded out. He struck out on a check swing his last time up. His average of 278 with 11 home runs. Homer at Wrigley Field. It was a loud one <laughs> and quick and quick. That's his only home run though in the month of July. A lot of time left Tom. Huh? Well yeah the rest of this uh, this game and then tomorrow. That's right <laughs> a lot of time. Cesar is back out of the tag. The end of the bat, but it's a center field of base hit. Cesar around second stops there. So Mike Kells aboard. And the Phils have two more on here in the fifth inning. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Budweiser still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. Ryan Howard. Howard is 0 for 1 with a walk. Howard does have a home run against Shelby Miller this year. Uh, and a quick point about Franco. I don't mind him not hitting home runs. There are many home runs in the month of July. He started getting that pull mode a little bit. Now he's starting to go back up the middle, hitting the ball to right center. Where right before I thought he started to overswing, especially after the series he had against the Yankees. Yeah, I think we saw that transition in the Cubs series where he was going back toward the middle a little bit more. Hit the double to right center with two strikes. It's a brand new Braves bullpen. They just got a phone call. Ross Detweiler's up and throwing. 
And there's a broken back base hit it to center field. Hernandez is around third, being way tall. Maven's throw to the plate is on one hot cutoff by Freddie Freeman. Can't get it out of his glove. An RBI single for Howard. It's three to one, Phillies. Five game hitting streak for Howard. 17 RBIs in his last 17 ball games. Ryan Howard, tremendous job of staying through this baseball. If he pulls off that pitch at all, it's going to be a rollover to the second base side of the field. Good base running by Cesar Hernandez and Michael Franco. Maybe comes up, and I don't know what he's doing with this baseball, but it's an awful throw. He does hit Freeman on a bounce. Freeman can't get out of his glove. Now we have first and third with one out. And Odubel Herrera is coming up. Odubel bunted his way on his last time up. He's one for two. Detwather. When he was really good with the Nationals, he was really hard to hit. Inside, one ball, one strike to Herrera. Have now caught and passed the Braves in hits. Shelby Miller's allowed 10 hits here tonight. And no extra base hits. Remember, the Phillies are singling them to death. Phillies have had at least one extra base hit in each of the last 14 games. And over that span, 48 extra base hits. It was a track meet in Chicago. It was. Try to backdoor a pitch on the outside corner. That cutter, and it's two balls and two strikes. Comparison between the two starters fairly similar, except uh, Aaron Harang, he didn't break. Three balls, two strikes. Odubel's seen a lot of pitches in his three at bats this evening. Does have the single to show for it and run scored his last time up. He got him way out front of a breaking ball. And he strikes him out. Second strike out of the inning, second out overall. And Freddie Galvis is coming up. Boy, that's a big run over at third base. That ball would have hit Freddie would have had a sore hip and a tight calf. <laughs> he would have been sleeping in the ice box. I was going to say he would have to go home with some ice. They have the old ice whirlpool down there. Fly ball, shallow left field. Simmons backpedaling, 
Garcia comes in, makes the catch. And that'll do it for the Phils here in the fifth inning. But they tack on a run on an RBI single by Ryan Howard. They leave two. We'll head to the sixth inning with the Phils maintaining a two run lead. No hitter in franchise history. The 31 year old left hander hadn't won a game since May 23rd. And when he finally did, he did so in historic fashion. Cole posted 13 strikeouts over 129 pitches and became the first pitcher since Sandy Koufax's perfect game in 1965 to no hit the Cubs. Eight outs came by flyouts, including the final out of the game that landed in Herrera's glove and landed Hamels into baseball history again. They call him Hollywood. He was the star. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, here are members of the North Penn High School baseball team, which won a state championship this past spring. And because of that, they get a chance to be honored with a fanatic. He stopped his dance to honor them. of successful teams around the uh, Delaware Valley Legion playoffs are going on right now state tournament in New Jersey was going on in Ewing Pennsylvania playoffs are going on as well here's Elvis Arajo as we go to the top of the sixth inning he'll face Simmons and then Shelby Miller's out of the on deck circle First pitch is outside it's one to know all right gentlemen well depending on what happens with Jake Diekman and Cole Hamels if the trade does officially go through this young man right here is going to be given a little added responsibility. Yes he is. Up high it's two and zero. Oh. Please have a couple of guys in the minor leagues that are throwing fairly well left handers including Adam Lowen. Former outfielder turned pitcher. Who's throwing well for the Iron Pigs? Well, there's definitely a guy that can get righties and lefties out. Obviously, it would be tough on a lefty. But I think his stuff is definitely good enough where you could leave him in there against a tough righty. Now the relief pitchers or the starters have been doing a pretty nice job since the All Star break. So guys like Araujo, I mean they haven't worked a whole lot. Last time he worked was in Chicago, the 26th. He went just a third of an inning. He's got the count back to three balls and two strikes as we begin the top of the sixth inning. Play. 
I think it's important for Elvis to be on the, the on the mound more. You know, even if it's every other day or you know, third of an inning yesterday, then the third inning today, whatever it's going to be, just so he can repeat his mechanics. Big tall guy. And sometimes that arm doesn't catch up to the lower half and gets a little too strong, like we saw the first three pitches. He's up in the zone. Plus, being a younger guy, you want him to develop. You want to get him out there as much as possible. You have to figure out if he's part of your future in exactly. some way, shape, or form. Fly ball, shallow right field. Hernandez, the second baseman, is out. One away. They did a nice job battling back there after falling behind Simmons. Three balls, no strikes. Well, the Phillies mural dedication will be Saturday with festivities beginning at 11 a.m. and the program starting at 11:30 at the Walnut Street Bridge at 24th and Walnut Street. Scheduled to attend Mike Schmidt, Brad Lidge, Steve Carlton, Jim Bunning, and other Phil's alums. Dick Allen will be there as well. The fanatic will be in attendance, and the Phillies ball girls. Dedication of the Phillies mural in conjunction with the mural arts program of Philadelphia. And then on Thursday, all fans will receive the. Citizens Bank Pride of the Phillies Prince, which is of the mural. One ball, one strike. But all 19 hits in this ball game are singles. <laughs> and every starting player has a hit, with the exception of Adonis Garcia, who's over three. That's something. And some have been hit. Some have been hit hard, but a lot of them have been little bloops. Or infield hits. One ball, two strikes to Shelby Miller. And a strike three call. At the knees. He may have thought it was a tad low. Two outs every time the Phillies pitchers retire the opposition. One, two, three. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. The official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Bob McClure to the, the phone. Jen Mark Gomez warming up in the pen. Our kick is take strike one. Back to back, pretty good sliders right there. First one was a little knee buckler. That one there had Marcakis out in front. What do you think, Ben? A lot of options right now. Bounce one. Looks like he's going heater away. And a strike three on the outside part of the plate. Back to back strikeouts looking for Elvis Araujo. A very nice inning. Started it with three balls against the leadoff batter, then came back and retired him one, two, three. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning here in Philadelphia. Phils lead the Braves three to one in game one.
Philadelphia Phillies. Buy Budweiser, still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. And buy your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com. Here's Dominic Brown to start it off, and Brown rips one toward right field. Could this be? It is gone! First home run of the year for Dominic Brown. He's tacked on another one for the Phils. It's a 4-1 lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. A collective whoop, as Dominic crosses the plate. Pretty good chance he's going to get a silent treatment in the dugout. Yeah. First pitch change up, up in the zone. Matter of time. Home runs come in bunches. Yeah, this could be a long one. The silent. Oh, no, there we go. I thought they were going to wait like they uh, waited last year. Carlos Ruiz the opposite way. That'll be caught by Marquez. By the way, that home run, 129 plate appearances for Dominic. Makes a winner out of Janice Swoyer of Whitehall, Pennsylvania, who's won $300 in the McDonald's home run jackpot. Way to go, Janice! I'm thinking more way to go, D. Brown. He doesn't get a cut of that. <laughs> he might get a French fry or two. Here's Cody Ashy. High five tomorrow. Oh, that ball just took off. Cody takes on the outside corner, 0 and 1. That was a close pitch. Well, Ben, there's your uh, key to the game. Extra base hit. That's it. He <laughs> broke the streak. <laughs> One extra base hit now in 15 straight games for the Phils. Cody Tays stays alive, spoils it foul. You know, Matt and I were going over the keys of the game, and I, I looked down and said, I'd like to see Don Brown go deep tonight. <laughs> You know, you can make the keys individual. But. Team sport. It's a team game, Tom. <laughs> that one's popped foul. To our left here in the Hall of Fame club. Well, after the base running mistake, too, it, who knows if it would cost the Phillies a run, but to get a run there, this is a game of redemption. Looks like he's about ready to fall over out there. He's walking around the mound. Oh, he's about to throw his 100th pitch of the night. And as she slaps it to short, Simmons up with it. Two outs. Tomorrow night at six, Derek Gunn and Rhea Hughes talk to special guest and longtime agent for the players, Lee Steinberg. Plus, what to expect when training camp starts next week. Watch Quick Slants presented by Nissan only on Comcast Sportsnet. Side one ball, one strike. Mm 
Don Brown's home run an estimated 381 feet. Nice crisp line drive. How's this ratio 74 strikes. On a 29 balls. Mm. He has been a strike thrower all year long. Four strikeouts overall, but 11 hits allowed. Another chance for Simmons at shortstop. And that'll do it for Ben Revere. Dominic Brown leads off the sixth inning with his first home run of 2015. Matt says they come in bunches. Let's hope so. That has extended the lead for the Bills four to one as we move to the top of the seventh. Dealers game summary while Shelby Miller has given up a, a season high 11 hits it matches the season high over six innings of work Dominic Brown his first home run of the season that came in the sixth inning probably the the biggest inning I don't know if you guys agree with this or not was the third when Aaron Harang allowed only one run even though he had the bases loaded and nobody out in that inning I mean, the Braves could have easily busted it wide open in that in the top of the third. Well, and I agree with you. I mean, they gave up. They gave up back to back to back singles. You struck out Freddie Freeman on a fastball. They'll tap her back to the pitcher. They sit by AJ, but then he get out of the inning. Ben made a good point when we went to break, saying it's amazing. All the pitches and all the hitters that he faced, he only led one run. Well, Jenmar Gomez takes over here in the seventh inning. First pitch to Maven is a strike. It's 0 1. So it'll be Gomez here. I guess we can assume Garcia in the eighth for Giles in the ninth. Up the third base line. I don't think they're going to be able to get him. Franco makes a really good effort to try to throw him out. But Maven does move well. These lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal. And that's helping you bank them. Citizens Bank. Play was a lot closer than I thought it was going. I thought it was just going to eat it, but he does come through that ball as well as any third baseman I've seen. He doesn't get to it and peel off the ball doesn't sail usually you're throwing it from that angle the ball is going to sail tail into the runner. But he really charges in and comes through that baseball very well. It has to be a play that like shortstops charging in that third baseman have to practice to get down. 
because there has to be a rhythm to it. You know, it's not something they can just roll over and do at any point. Mm -hmm. Freddie Freeman is one for three in this game. Chopper to first. Ryan Howard has it. There's one. They should be able to turn two. Gomez gets there. Oh, that's a beauty. Three, six, one, double play. PFPs work to perfection right there. Well, very good pitch. I like Ryan right here. Gets out of the way of the base runner. Moves in a little bit. Gives a strong throw. Freddie knowing that Gomez is going to be able to get back and cover. And that's the proper side you want to throw the ball. You're inside the base path. You throw the inside the second base. Very nice. One, six, three, double. Uh, I'm sorry, three, six, one, double play. A lot of first basemen will try to make that play and rush back to first base. Correct. Your job is once you throw it to second base, you're done. You get out of the way. Yeah, there's a lot of counting on a teammate when it comes to baseball, and that one you're counting on the pitcher getting there. Right. Gomez slipped as he threw that one. Garcia didn't swing at that one. He did not. Yeah. <laughs> that hit the grass. <laughs> he wanted to, though. He sure did. <laughs> Hickory. When's the last time you saw a hickory bat? Mike Trout uses it. Does it really? Yes. Victor Babitz chirping from the Braves dugout after that pitch. Two balls, one strike to Garcia. Foul three and two. Little quick pitch and he lays off. Well, he would have got him going on that one too if it would have been in the strike zone. So. So ball four, and the Braves have another base runner, and AJ Przinsky's coming up. Chooch is probably saying, "Hey, if you're going to do that, you got to give me some type of signal." If he does it, Chooch has to make sure he's in the right stance to make a pitch look presentable to Brian Gorman. You know, if he's not ready to receive the ball, he's not going to make it look good. I don't mind the quick pitch. I think that's the wrong time to do it. You're up by three runs. Get a free swinger. The yeah, plate. just get up there, take your time, and throw a strike and let him put the ball in play. I think it's worked for him, so that's probably in his mind. It's worked for him a couple of times. A lot of times it has not worked for him. DJ Przinsky has a couple of hits here tonight. Phillies lead it by three, top of the seventh inning. I think Johnson's spikes are clean now. He was rocking that wall, wasn't he? Yeah. Hang that microphone. Back to the box. Gomez has got it. Krasinski just flips the bat. Side is retired. 11 pitch inning for Genmar. So he and Araujo combined for two scoreless innings. The double play certainly helped out in this one. Time to stretch here in Philadelphia.
Nice job in two scoreless innings of work. The Phillies have padded their lead. They lead it by three, four to one. HP's new series of color laser jet printers deliver unmatched quality and their jet intelligent toner cartridges print up to one third more pages. Get yours from who? But WB Mason today and experience the difference. Nobody beats WB on HP. Last of the seventh inning, Ross Detweiler is the new pitcher for the Braves. We really saw him an awful lot when he was with the Washington Nationals as a starting pitcher. Still throws, has a pretty good arm, 90 to 94. Curveball and a change. When he was a starter, there were times the Phillies would face him and all he would throw was a different fastball. Yeah. They, they were just having so much trouble hitting it. And that's when the Phillies were, you know, in their heyday. One ball, one strike to Hernandez. He's always had a good arm. First round draft pick. Like Matt said earlier, repeating your delivery is tough for a guy of that's that tall and fastball command. But yeah. he, he also, sorry, but he also used to throw across his body a lot he more definitely did. than he does now. Now he came out of college. Didn't he have a, a real bad hip? Problem with the, with he the had, delivery. He had hip problems uh, for a lot of his time yeah. with the Washington Nationals. Maybe that's why he doesn't crossfire the way he used to. There is Luis Garcia in the bullpen. Hernandez goes down looking one out here in the seventh. Let's see, here you go. That's all fastballs right there. The highest was at 94, the lowest was at 91. The 2015 Jekyll and Hyde Tour will take place Saturday, August 15th at Citizens Bank Park. That's right, Zach Brown will be back in Philadelphia featuring special guests, the Avit Brothers. For information or to purchase tickets, go to Phillies.com slash country. Zach Brown Band has been doing uh, some sold out shows all around the United States. They've been utilizing baseball facilities, Boston, D.C., Wrigley Field. The shows are, get, are getting rave reviews. One ball, no strikes to Franco. You gotta be careful with this pop up if you're in the stands. It's going up quick and it's coming down quicker. He had no problem with it. Johnson backs up on it from the edge of the outfield grass. A good play. And there are two outs. Once he backed up on it, I didn't think there was a chance he was going to be able to make that play. It is a good play. And he lets this ball play him. Takes that long hop. And be very sure of your hands and of your strong arm. If you're going to back up on a baseball like that. Two outs for Ryan Howard here in the bottom of the seventh. Howard hustling up the line, but he's retired. 4 3 on the put out. 1 2 3 go the fills here in the home seventh inning. We have played seven. We'll move to the eighth. Back to the bullpen. Three run lead.
Toyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Buy McDonald's. Double the love it at McDonald's with a double cheeseburger and small fry. Just $2.50. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And buy the Quality Plus Ford stores. Go further. Four to one. The Phillies on top of the Braves. Braves took a one nothing lead early on. The Phillies have scored four unanswered runs. Time now for a Hyundai defensive play of the game. What happened last in the seventh inning? Gomez uh, Freeman hits a weak ground ball at first. Nice play by Ryan Howard getting out of the way. The base runner making a strong throw to Freddie Galvez, who then makes a strong throw back to first. Pitch a perfect 3 6 1 double play. That's you your Hyundai defensive play of the game, brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Well, Luis Garcia will now take over here in the eighth. Two scoreless innings by the Phillies bullpen. Chris Johnson leads it off. He's one for three. Oh and one. Matt, did you uh, did you hear that Ben didn't turn the volume down on the Surface Pro 3 computer? Again? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> First time it's been out since San Francisco. I was say you haven't used it in a while. Sorry, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike to Chris Johnson. Outside, slider whizzed outside. It's two and one. And the more I look at that Hyundai defensive play of the game that Brian Howard starting that double play the best thing he did on that. Yes he cleared a lane to make a throwing lane for himself but he went into the glove and got the ball with his bare hand. He didn't flip the ball. Catchers do that sometimes on the throw to second base. They'll flip the ball and end up dropping the baseball. Ryan Howard went in dug the ball out of his glove and then made the throw. He didn't just flip it. Watch him go in here with his left hand his bare hand his throwing hand. He goes into the glove gets the ball. And makes a good delivery to, to Freddie there at shortstop. So that's what you want to do. You never want to flip the ball. There's too much chance of error. He may have bailed him out on that one. It's a 3 1 pitch that he skies to shallow center. And Hernandez puts it away. Chase Peterson's coming up. Time for the Major League Notebook, Murph. All right, thanks, Don. Brought to you by St. Joseph's University. And former Philly Vance Worley has been designated for assignment by the Pittsburgh Pirates to make uh, some room for another former Philly, and that is Joe Blanton, who the Pirates acquired uh, last night from the Royals. They needed that extra roster spot, so they've uh, sent uh, Vance Worley down. He's going to have to clear waivers before he can accept the uh, spot in the minor leagues. And also, as everyone's uh, kind of getting some arms, the Yankees are losing one. Michael Pineda is headed to the 15-day disabled list. He has a forearm strain. He had an MRI done today, and there was no damage to that uh, elbow uh, ligament, so that is good news for the New York Yankees, but they got to shut him down for about 15 days in hopes that that uh, pain goes away in his elbow and then uh, he should be okay they're, they're confident that he'll be okay after that so that is your major league notebook brought to you by St. Joe's tonight guys. see you wonder if uh, if the Pineda injury will open up the the door for the Yankees to try to get James Shields from the Padres his shallow left field Revere is there to make the catch particularly if David Price is off the market the Yankees have talked about possibly going after David Price My son and I were eating lunch today and watching the, the Mets game and you referred to with the Padres and I looked up and said Mets or Blue Jays acquired David Price and I said goodness they are making some moves. Well, we were up there the last couple of days and Alex Anthopoulos said that he probably wouldn't wouldn't trade for a pitcher unless something opened up and then the next day is when the Tigers said well all of these guys are available. Yeah. No balls at one strike. It makes them a very good team. Offensively, they're already off the charts. Mm -hmm. But to have David Price and Mark Burley and the way R.A. Dickey threw last night, Marco Estrada's thrown well tonight for the Blue Jays. Well, what it does is you have a, 
a number one now. Not saying that Brewers not a number one. Shallow center field. But I will tell you this though, Tom and Ben, if New York wants to get a pitcher, they need to trade that big guy in the minor leagues. Aaron Judge. They better get rid of him if they want a good pitcher. Yeah, they may be asked to uh, put him in the deal. Four to one Phillies will go to the bottom of the eighth inning here in Philadelphia. Business person special and all fans coming to the ballpark receive a Citizens Bank pride of the Phillies print featuring the Phillies mural. Also after the game it's Nemours kids run the bases for fans 14 and under. Tickets can be purchased for the Phils and the Dodgers all three games by going to Phillies.com. Luis Garcia a one two three seventh. that means we go to the. Or should be eighth we go to the bottom of the eighth inning and Odubel Herrero lead it off against Ross Detweiler. Threw just nine pitches in his one inning of work so far. 0 and 1. Ken Giles. In the dirt, one and two. Another soccer game or something? People are chanting USA. <laughs> ben, you had time off. Did we win another soccer game or something? I don't believe so. I wouldn't know if we did. <laughs> two and two to Odubel Herrera. Inside. Did he go? No. Now three and two. All you have to do is ask O'Double whether he went or not. I know why they're chanting USA because Toronto's beating Canada five to two with two out in the ninth. <laughs> Toronto's beating who? Kansas City. Yeah. 
Who did I say? Canada. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> Toronto, Canada is beating. <laughs> Sorry. It was a long three days up there. Another foul ball, and it remains three and two. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Reds are bombing the Pirates 14 to 2. Brandon Phillips has two home runs. A lot of the Reds are in play, it seems. Jay Bruce, looks like the Mets are interested in getting Jay Bruce after they decided not to go after Carlos Gomez. Teddy Alderson said that uh, it seems like the Astros doctors were not as concerned as ours were about whatever it is that they saw surrounding Carlos Gomez. Now Jay Bruce could be on the move. Another long at bat for O'Double. He had a 10 pitch at bat in the first. This is going to be at least eight. Swing and a miss. He got him 94 on that fastball. Second strikeout for Detweiler. And with one out, here comes Freddie Galvis. Who has a hit tonight in a run score? Freddie wearing that. Protective guard on his right calf. He sure is. He wasn't wearing it in his last step bat, though, was he? He was not. Must have had some additional swelling. I doubt he'll foul one off his back. Off the glove of Detweiler. That's going to wind up being a base hit for Freddie. It's his second hit of the night. So, one out single, and here comes Dominic Brown, who's two for three, including his first home run of the year. There it is. Don Brown gets a fastball. First pitch, fastball swinging. Nice, easy swing. Let the velocity of the pitch do all the work. Don Brown goes up top to right field for his first homer of the year. Out to shortstop. This could be two. Simmons flips to second for one over to first. Don moving up the line pretty good. He's able to beat the throw. 6 4 on the put out at second base. So fielder's choice. And here comes Freddie Gonzalez. So Detweiler will not face Carlos Ruiz. They're going to bring in a right-hander to face Carlos. A pitching change for Atlanta. Detweiler goes an inning in two-thirds, allows one hit. We'll be back with a new pitcher right after this.
will be first to break the news. Experience counts, follows Philly's insider Jim Salisbury, the best source for 24-7 Phillies coverage on Comcast Sportsnet. Jimmy did a really, really nice job following what was happening last night from Toronto. And the Braves, well, they've got some additions to their bullpen that have finally arrived. Marksbury and Kelly. Ryan Kelly is to your right. Matt Marksbury to your left. Crisp new uniforms. Now they have arrived from the minor leagues with all the deals that have been made today. Jim Johnson and Luis Avilan both were traded to the Dodgers. So they said hello to their new teammates. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Ryan. Hey, guys. Nice to catch up with you again. You know the rookies with those numbers on their backs. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Braves have had seven players record their first major league hit this year. I mean, that, that's offense alone. Pitching-wise, as Jake Brigham delivers his first pitch, they've had some youngsters in there as well. Brigham's numbers in the minor leagues. He's also been up with the big leagues. Softly to second base, charging it is Peterson. And the Phillies are retired here in the eighth inning. No runs, one hit, and one man left. Kenny Giles coming on to try to pick up his second save of the season as we move to the top of the ninth inning here in Philadelphia. Here at Citizens Bank Park, Pat Burrow will be inducted into the Phillies Wall of Fame. Saturday is alumni night, and Sunday, all fans will receive the Phillies Wall of Fame fathead. Tickets can be purchased by going to phillies.com. Well, earlier today, there is Scott Palmer chatting with Pat Burrow as part of uh, our alumni luncheon. Larry Anderson, well, it was a late night. Bobby Abreu, Jason Michaels, Chase Utley, and Charlie Manuel also part of the dais. MC'd by Scott Palmer. How do you think Pat's speech is going to be tomorrow, Matt? Typical Pat. Interesting, very good. Entertaining. Looking forward to it. We'll get a chance to talk to Pat at some point tomorrow and a bunch of the alums this weekend. Ken Giles will take over going after his second save of the season. Picked his first save up in Toronto. Yuri Perez will lead it off uh, for the Braves. Oh 
First pitch is over 0 and 1. That sounded pretty crisp. 99. It was. A hundred miles an hour. Jeez. One oh one. Fans are reacting to it when they see it up on the board. Ball two strikes. A line drive back through the middle of base hit. He threw him a slider. And Perez, who was way late on the fastballs, was able to catch up to the 88 mile an hour slider. I don't get it. But he was throwing gas. Well, they threw it 101 the pitch before that, and it comes back about 103 right yeah. here. But luckily, it missed him. Well, luckily, his hand got out of the, didn't tap it. Marquecas is up. Marquecas is singled and scored a run. He walked back in the fourth inning. So you give the folks down in Baltimore a lot of credit. He returned. For a couple games there, back in town for the first time, they really let him know that he was appreciated during his tenure there in Baltimore. And Buck Showwater even came out and said, "You know what? We miss him." You know, he didn't give the the generic company line. Well, he's part of another team now. Blah yeah. blah blah. No, he said, "Yeah, we miss him. He meant a lot to this ball club." Yeah, he was impactful for the the Orioles while he was there. Pitches whacked foul. And it's one and two. So Perez goes back to first base. Not being held on by Ryan Howard. Well, he's not being held on by Ryan Howard because you want to take the hole at first base. But not a good idea to try to steal a base right now. Because if you hit a line drive, you're doubled up. Well, Terry Pendleton just whispered something to him. He doesn't go this time, and it's foul. Off the hands, that'll be into right field for a base hit. Perez will go to second, and it means the tying run is coming to the plate. So, two hits tonight for Marcakis. Stay tuned after the game. Former Phil Marlon Anderson will give his thoughts on the looming trade deadline. And tonight's game, only on Cure Auto Insurance, presents Phillies Post Game Live. Two hits. Marquez's that bat would have looked a whole lot better if they had gotten Perez. Maven takes a slider 0 and 1. Him consistently at 100 miles an hour. No. And location with the fastball today, that's 100, and, that's 100 miles an hour, knee high, outer third. Perez fastballs, 100, 101. 
Now the 0-2 pitch. Defensive swing. Right side. <laughs> She's not crying, right? <laughs> Little dribbler in front of the plate. Ruiz picks it up, steps on the bat, throws in time. Boy, that was reminiscent of Roy Halladay's no hitter against the Cincinnati Reds. The ball that rolled up the bat. And that night, Ruiz was able to avoid it. Tonight, it became an obstacle. But he made the play 2 3 on the put out one out with runners on second and third. That was the first thing I thought of Tom exactly. Was that no no by Roy Halliday. You like obstacles being thrown at you Ben when you're wearing all that gear and everything. Not so much. <laughs> So now Freeman's up in field his back pitches pop foul and out of play. I remember that night thinking that as the ball rolled up the bat that Carlos may trip on the bat. Well here it is. Brandon Phillips is the batter. <laughs> and he had just enough on it to get just Brandon enough. Phillips. Yep. Good slider 0 and 2. I think it'd be interesting to see if Major League Baseball would look at that play like that. How were runners running and dropping the bat that far down the line interfering with the ball or. If they deem the it catcher. intentional. Yeah. Right. Runners lead off second and third. The 0 2 pitch coming to Freeman. Swing and a miss. He got him. Two outs. This fastball is topped off at 101 tonight. That slider was at 89. And look at the depth on these last two sliders. Very good. That one actually kind of backs up a little bit. Almost has an action like a curveball, 12 to 6 curveball. Yep. You know, I think you'll see that if he is reaching triple digits, you'll see him power through that breaking ball. Boy, great job by Ruiz on that slider. He went down and got it. He sure did. Now, if you have that arm speed, sometimes you will see a pitcher power through a breaking ball because he just is creating more arm speed. You're at 100, 101. Sometimes it's hard to get a ball to break when you create that much arm speed. They throw it again. Not a bad spot. It was close. Carlos had to bring it back. And it's one and one. Freeman did have one hit tonight, but a double play and a strikeout in his last two at bats. Two balls, one strike. Foul tip, 100 again, two and two. 21,000 plus coming to their feet.
just got a piece of it. Strikes of the yeah. 22 pitches. Well, let's hope number 23 is a strike as well. A 2 2 pitch. Chopper over to third. Foul. Or he may be destined to see a high fastball here. Yeah, and that was a. What? say? Been a hanger in her house? And then some. <laughs> Garcia shaking his head there saying I should have done a little bit more with that one. Ben Giles trying to put a topper on game one of this homestand. He's ready in the 2 2 pitch. And a stri slider straight three called. Garcia goes down looking. Ken Giles picks up back to back strikeouts and works out of a jam here in the ninth inning. And the Phillies hang on and win it by a final of four to one. He had a lively fastball tonight, and he had a really good slider tonight as well. Hit under one with his fastball on a couple of different occasions, consistently at 100 miles an hour. Phillies trailed it by one at one point in this ball game, but Freddie Galvis's two-run single gave them the lead. Ryan Howard's RBI single added to the lead. Dominic Brown's home run gave them some breathing room. And the bullpen has continued what has been a dominant run for them since the All-Star break. Well, just a good night. With everything hanging over the ball club with the possibility of Cole Hamels being traded, Jake Deakman being traded, the Phils come out with this victory, and our W.B. Mason delivery of the game comes from Dominic Brown. You're right. First pitch fastball. And just shillelaghs it out to right field. You talk about something that Don Brown wanted to do personally was go up top. And he did that. He's W. Mason delivery of the game and is now with Greg Murphy. All right, thank you very much, Ben. Yep, here with Don Brown. And, uh, you know, the hits have been coming for you of late. Uh, a couple of games, but uh, tonight the long ball comes as well. I just said he had no doubt about it. It felt pretty good, did it not? Oh, yeah, it felt good. I mean, 100 at bats. Get one home run under your belt, you know, finally, finally. So it felt great, you know, hitting is contagious, man. We've been swinging the bat well as a team and we're trying to just continue to just keep fighting and we're having fun the second half. Yeah, Matt Stair said uh, during the broadcast after he hit that, he said, hey, home runs come in bunches for power hitters like Don Brown. Hey, do you feel that way? You feel like maybe this will get you on a roll? Right. Yeah. I mean, I listen to Stairs a lot, man. I try to prick his brain as much as possible. He's always sneaking into the video. Got a whole lot in there, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that guy knows how to hit, man. So, yeah. As for me, you know, I mean, home run does, they do, they do come in bunches, but, uh, you know, I'm not really worried about that. I'm just trying to continue to use the whole field. You know, that's what I've been doing the second half and trying to just continue to do that. Yeah, you also mentioned that hitting is contagious, and this team is hitting. You're also getting good pitching. You're getting good uh, guys out of the ball. A full team effort over the since the All-Star right. break, really. Uh, I mean, it's got to make it a lot more fun to come to the yeah, ballpark. Exactly. It's been a lot fun, a lot more fun. you got a lot of young guys in the clubhouse, so we're banging out the music all day. You know, having fun, playing cards, you know, doing the little things that counts on and off the field. And winning ball games, that always helps as well. Oh, yeah, that definitely helps. <laughs> Steve Brown, thank you very much. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph, we appreciate that. Here's the final out. Garcia thought it may have been a little high, but Ken Giles able to record his second save. The Phillies win it 4-1. to one. They take game one, 10-2 since the break.